Hi everyone, this is Tina Schmidt. I thank you for joining me for our watercolor demonstration today. I'm using these slant-edged hog hair brushes, one inch and one and a half inch wide. Um, my color list is below in the description and I mix up my own greens. What I'm going to do is just lay in the first layer of the colors and I'm using um, the edges of the brush and intentionally I'm painting very abstractly in the very beginning here and this is there's no drawing on the paper this is all really just free handing it and free flowing um, basically I'm starting from the background of the waterfall where the foliage is and I'll be working towards the middle ground and then the foreground so in this demonstration what I wanted to really make a point across to my viewers is that, um, and by the way, thank you for joining me today for this video, is that uh, these random, what appears to be random color flow is one of the most beautiful things about watercolor. So we'll be exploring that. The other thing I wanted to make clear today in this video is that even after you think the painting is done or you uh, finish the painting, um, even after I've signed the painting, I go back in there and do a bit more work. And so there's nothing that says, oh, because you've signed it, you're totally done with it. No, it's, it's your painting and there are no rules. And if you finish it and you sign it and you think, no, I think I could do something else. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm going to demonstrate that today. I have, uh, you know, the, the idea is to be free of rules and regulations and to enjoy the process of uh, the development of the creation itself. So here you see um, the colors being added and they're quite bold and they will meld in, in, into each other and sort of flow together and I love layering these transparencies and letting them do their thing as watercolors and um, the paper itself is taped down to a board and then I have two little jar lids underneath I'm using these uh, peanut butter jar lids underneath just to angle it slightly. So it's about a half inch off of the flat surface of the table. Um, as you see here, I start going down to the lower part of the composition and just sort of filling in these spaces as much as I can with the first go round. Um, I'm, I'm using these different brushes, the one inch hog hair slant uh, edge brush and then I will use a, a small weasel hair. It's a Chinese calligraphy brush right there. And I use that for the water. Um, the water is a little bit of cobalt blue, cerulean blue, um, which I just lightly do as a transparent layer in there. And I will come in as the painting develops. What I'm trying to do is fill up the composition, fill up that sheet with color um, as quick as I can so I will be able to go back in for the next layer. Um, but I want to get the idea of the composition down in my head um, and down on the paper as quickly as possible. And so a part of this is very much free-flowing. I look at how the paint is, is on the paper and then I say, yeah, but you know, I think this wants to be this way, and I'll, it'll adjust in the, my my mind a little bit. It'll it'll compromise. So I'm coming in now with the splashes of water. I'm using cerulean blue. It's a it's lighter and um, not as bold as cobalt. But I'll blend a little cobalt in there too. So right now I'm just establishing the direction of the water. And I'm letting the weasel hair calligraphy brush have the tips very split up. And I'm just laying in the, um, the splashes of the water. A little bit of the direction of the water flow. 
This gives me my first layer of the work. And I'm back to the uh, larger hog hair brush and I'm coming in with the next layer of the color. And in, and in some ways I've let the under layer dry a bit so I don't want it to run and bleed too much as I'm trying to establish the sharper edges or I should say more edgy formation of the rocks. So I've used that hog hair brush and uh, as I develop the paper a bit more, at some point I start bringing the, the uh, water, uh, excuse me, as I develop the water more, so at some point I will merge the water and the rock um, so that the whole thing comes together a bit more cohesively. And that comes a lot with the splashing, developing these splashing droplets later, where the droplets in the water and splashed on the rocks uh, will really help bring it together. So this is developing to be a strong vertical composition. And I'm liking how it's starting to come together. Um, I'll soften some of those stones, those green stones in the middle. Uh, right now I'm just laying in their, their, the idea that these rocks are mossy and kind of peeking through the waterfall. But as it develops, you'll see they'll get washed out a bit. Right now they're just very bold, but they'll be suppressed back in underneath the water in a little bit. So while the bottom part of the painting is drying, I'm working on the upper portion of the foliage and uh, I try to keep it random. I don't want it to look too much like uh, manufactured, repetitive cookie cutter patterns. And that's one thing that as an artist we have to avoid that um, habit of getting into repetitive patterns like a fence, you know, with a, a post and some wire and a post and a wire. We can do that with trees and end up, you know, making them look quite mechanical. So um, in their spacing. What I'm doing now is I'm using a very fine tip twig brush and I'm just articulating a few of the rocks, uh, some of their cracks and odd formations and different kinds of detailing in the rocks. Now what, what I'm doing here is I'll start um, getting the eye to focus on the vertical formation. Um, so along the edges there you will see sometimes I dim out the edges on the sides of the painting where the detail might run the eye in the wrong direction. Um, like uh, here we've got this water pouring in uh, from the side which is fine because it's supportive and putting the eye towards the center but in areas where perhaps you know especially at the top um, we don't want the eye running horizontally off to the sides it creates a conflict so in composition so you'll see eventually what I do is I will start dimming the left hand side I have to make a choice right now there's this pattern of the water coming in from both sides on the top of the painting and we can get stuck our eye can actually get stuck up there because that formation of the horizontal water and the vertical water forms sort of an X or a place for us to get stuck. So what I'll do is is sort of dim out that left side later, you'll see. Right now I'm working on the uh, the rocks that are emerging out from the waterfall. I, I felt like the water wasn't as interesting unless I put something for the water to fall upon before it hit the bottom. So now I've made some submerged rocks that will be coming through.
and using an old stiff toothbrush, I'm dipping straight into titanium white and I'm splashing it onto the water and around the rocks. And what this does is give the idea of uh, water splashes. Now, I'm using a damp paper towel, not soaking wet, but damp, to soak up wherever those droplets go that I don't want them to be at this point. So I'll put some on there, and then if they're too gloppy, I'll take them off. Um, but what I'm doing is establishing the characteristic of the water. And so now I'm coming in with the hog hair brush again on its sharp edge, and I'm filling in some of that background on the rock. If it's too highlighted, it'll compete with the water. So you have a main place you want the eye to focus, the center of focus or wherever. Um, in this case, it's a vertical composition. I want the eye to move from top to bottom. And everything else has to support that idea. I'm dipping into the white and adding a little water to make these transparent vertical lines. I'm using the toothbrush because it's more random. Uh, the bristles will leave sort of what appears to be a more natural fall. And then I use titanium white undiluted for the splatters. So um, it depends, you know, how thick your paint is. But in this case, um, I don't have to dilute it too much. Um, it's pretty much straight out, except for when I make the vertical striations over the rocks, that's a little bit more diluted so it could be transparent. I don't want it looking like toothpaste and I don't want it looking heavy. So um, it's sort of repeating that process. Okay, now at this point I think, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm done, but then I'm not. I took the tape off and then I said, no, I'm going to dim down that left side. Uh, I don't want that much action up at the top. I need the eye to move downward more. And as you see here, by tinting that down, it doesn't stop the idea that water is coming from there. It just makes it less demanding for the eye to be up on that area. And now I'm working in a few more details. On the stones, sort of perhaps pressing in a little bit more of that contrast of the darker colors in the details. So I sign it. I go, yeah, okay, I think I'm done. And then I realize, hmm, next day, not done. I don't like those green blobs coming through. I think they're too strong. Or are they too um, much the same? I came in on this painting later after I walked away from it. There's nothing wrong with that. You might find that, you know, you give it a rest, you make it more interesting, maybe you come at it and you see it from a different light the next day or a few hours later. So in this case, um, I felt that those stones were too uniform. They didn't look natural, so I got rid of one of them and I just sort of made it more of an interesting rock formation and um, now I have the eye moving downward in the right direction that I want to without getting stuck. Um, then I decided, okay, yeah, it needs, these need to be broken up. They look too much um, the same. And I felt like I just was going to miss out on hitting those rocks and letting that water just cast. I wanted to make it more interesting. In other words, instead of the waterfall making a straight line down, um, I wanted the composition to, I wanted the eye to slow down a little bit and I wanted to give the impression of that water really kind of cascading over the rocks instead of just the rocks protruding out. And so in this way it sort of brought the water and the rock idea together more harmonious. And it just didn't look like water against rocks, now it looks more like water flowing with the rocks. So I turn the paper upside down to get the splashes in the direction I want a little more. It makes it more interesting. I'm using my left hand to, as a guard to keep the splattering from going onto the rocks. And that's starting to look pretty good. 
I come in with the titanium white again, dabbing it to get thicker blobs of that uh, water splash. And so now it seems to me it's working better. And I use a thinner glaze over the rocks that are under the water. And um, it's starting to look pretty good. Little touch up here and there to uh, for details. Maybe some accents. Um, this time really dark color just to accent those stones in any other area. It'll push the contrast a bit more. And I quit while I'm ahead. I think that's pretty much done. It looks better than where I had left it the other day. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and leave your comments below. I thank you for visiting me in this work today. God bless you. Be safe, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.